Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox. On this channel, I discuss various games that are exclusively playable on the Xbox and Xbox 360. However, today I want to focus on games that are easily accessible on Xbox Series consoles. While the current selection of games could use a little bit more, at least some excellent games are on the list. I want to share five of them that I believe are worth playing. I tried to keep it at 5 for brevity, so some didn't make today's list, such as Jade Empire, Knights of the Old Republic, Blinks, and many more. But include those as honorable mentions because there are so many classics worth playing on the backwards compatibility list, and be sure to put in the comments what I should add in next time I bring up this topic. All the footage in today's video was captured from the Xbox Series X, and I'd like to thank my campers and camp counselors for their support. And let's go ahead and jump into this list. First on the list is Panzer Dragoon Orta, developed by Smilebit and published by Sega. This was initially released only on the Xbox in Japan in 2002 and then worldwide in 2003. It is available in the Xbox Store for only $10, which is incredible. For this price, you get to enjoy one of the most beautifully designed Xbox games of all time, and it looks fantastic on the Series X. The visuals are incredibly crisp, and the art design features vibrant and popping colors. Panzer Dragoon Orta is the fourth installment in the Panzer Dragoon series, a beloved franchise. It is a rail shooter where you control Orta, a character who escaped imprisonment and embarks on a journey to uncover her origins. This is just a brief synopsis as the game features extensive lore and captivating world building. One unique aspect in this game is the original language, which enhances the mystical atmosphere during gameplay. The game is filled with off-the-wall terminology demonstrating the developer's efforts to craft an immersive and compelling world to explore. In this post-apocalyptic world, you'll fly around and visit numerous different locations and environments each level offering a fresh and unique experience. You control your dragon following a predetermined path, but you're able to move around the screen to avoid enemy shots. Using your reticule, you aim at your enemies and shoot. The game's design may seem simple, but the dragon's three different forms ensure that the gameplay remains engaging and varied. These forms include one that makes you faster and grants the ability to shoot projectiles. You have a heavy mode where you're much slower but deal more damage, and a mode that balances these two. Your ability to switch between these forms affects your success in the game, and it adds a strategic element to the gameplay, especially in the game's tense boss battles that will require you to swap around to different forms constantly. The game can get difficult, but never in a frustrating way. While it's possible to complete levels by only changing forms occasionally, doing so will result in lower end level grades and fewer unlockables, encouraging you to fully explore the game's mechanics. This game's ability to change forms and its fast paced shooting mechanics work together to create an addictive experience from start to finish. The levels are never too long, and aiming for a higher kill rate or taking fewer hits makes this game highly replayable. The level design is constantly varied, and you will hop around from giant deserts filled with bones to lush jungles, which all look gorgeous when playing through. I enjoy the rail shooter design, and always have fun playing this game and the rest of the games in the series. The controls work well with the new Xbox controller, and they may feel a bit strange at first, but once you get used to them, it all comes together nicely. The art design of each level makes it great to explore, and Orta has some incredible music. Each level always has me turning up the volume to hear gorgeous compositions with an eclectic feel. The composer here knocks it out of the park. I'm heaping a ton of praise onto this game, but it deserves it. It's one of the most unique games on the original Xbox, and it still holds up as unique on a modern console. It looks amazing on the Series X, and at $10, it's a great deal. Next on the list is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, published and developed by Ubisoft. This game was released in 2005 in North America and PAL regions for the Xbox and most major consoles of the 6th generation. It is available on the Xbox Store for $15. 
any of the first three Splinter Cell titles could have made it to this list as they are all fun. But for me, Chaos Theory is an excellent pick for anyone getting into the franchise. It's an incredibly well-made game. Chaos Theory has incredible levels and wonderful music, making it one of the best stealth games you can play. Like Panzer Dragoon, this game looks great on the original Xbox and looks even better on the Series X. In Splinter Cell, shadows are crucial because the main character, Sam Fisher, must stay hidden. The lighting in the game had to be perfect to make sure you could see how dark you are while still being able to see the game. The light monitor on the lower right helps with this, but the lighting is so well done that it's easy to tell where you're at at all times and just how dark it is. The visuals are good with detailed dynamic lighting from moving lights and lamps adding to the immersive feel of the game world. The story in this game revolves around a potential war in Asia involving Japan. Considering North America is allied with Japan, the player takes on the role of Fisher and embarks on various missions to weave together the different aspects of the story. If you enjoy military-themed novels, you will find this plot captivating. The voice acting is also top-notch, featuring a great cast of actors, including Michael Ironside. The plot sets the stage for exciting globetrotting and detailed levels. The level design in Chaos Theory is intricate with each level featuring amazing detail. While some levels may not be massive, they are filled with enough interesting features to make them feel well defined. This makes it enjoyable to revisit these levels, and I think this game is highly replayable. Trying to beat the fastest times and completing levels without making a sound is thrilling, and the gameplay is executed so well that it never feels like a chore. Crouching and moving silently in buildings and ships is responsive and never confusing. I appreciate the number of devices at your disposal and you get to choose how to use them effectively. There is something about jumping and hanging off ledges that makes you feel like a master at stealth when an enemy walks right under you and you're right beside them. Taking everybody out as a smooth operator is satisfying. It's an all-around fun game with a technically impressive package for the time that still holds up very well. And I think it's great to play now, especially because we haven't seen a Splinter Cell game in what feels like ages. Add the score from Jesper Kidd and Eamon Tobin, and it's incredible. Eamon Tobin is one of my favorite electronic artists, so his inclusion here is one I love to see. Chaos Theory is a great package for any fan of stealth. Any of the backwards compatible Splinter Cell games are great, but Chaos Theory is the franchise at its pinnacle. Firing on all cylinders as far as game design goes, and replaying this one will make you wish extra hard that we would finally see a new entry sometime soon. The next game is Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. It was released in 2005 for the Xbox and PS2 in North America and PAL regions. This game was developed by Pandemic Studios and published by LucasArts. It is currently available for $10 on the Xbox Store. True to its name, Playground of Destruction is all about causing chaos in an open world. With an innovative design for its time, you are immersed in a world full of side missions and activities that can be completed in any order. The game is set in North Korea, in conflict with other nations. As a mercenary, your main objective is to eliminate 52 different leaders in the country while also earning money and gathering information. This is achieved through participating in races, causing destruction, and completing various side objectives. The game offers a large play area with multiple vehicles and a genuinely enjoyable sandbox experience. 
the graphics on the Series X are impressive, and the game features expansive areas with many objects on the screen, all in high definition. The explosion effects and destruction are particularly wonderful for a game of its time. The crumbling buildings and the on-screen explosions adds to the game's wonderful destruction. The open world feel allows for freedom to explore and engage in all of the side activities. Additionally, the game offers enough structure and mission variety to keep things interesting throughout its lengthy playtime. It plays just like you'd expect a Grand Theft Auto game to play. It's a third-person shooter with a wide range of weapons and the ability to hop into any car you want. If you've played a shooter like this before, it's precisely what you would expect, and it feels excellent to play. The money system adds some fun flair, blowing up cars and taking out enemies will give you bonus bucks, allowing you to buy supplies and vehicles from the black market. Mercenaries is just a fun game pure and simple. It gives you the tools to do whatever you want and does an excellent job of keeping it entertaining all the way through. For someone like me, who likes a game with good structure, this game offers a lot to do, but if you like messing around, this game is also made for you. I find it interesting that LucasArts published this game because the music instantly reminds me of Star Wars with its huge compositions. The music is done by Chris Tilton and Michael Giacchino, who always put in amazing work whenever they work on a video game. The game was also developed by Pandemic, which had an incredibly successful year in 2005 with games like Destroy All Humans, Battlefront 2, and this game, and it's a shame that Pandemic was shut down just a few years later. This game includes all of their signature features, and it's a game you can pick up and play over a long period of time. And at just $10, it's a great experience. Next up is Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge, a game that holds the top spot on my ranking list of all the games I've reviewed on the channel so far. It was released exclusively on the Xbox in 2003 in North America and Europe. It was published by Microsoft Game Studios and developed by FASA. Crimson Skies is a $10 game on the Xbox Store and it's also available on Game Pass. This is an arcade flight game, so it focuses on fast-paced, action-packed gameplay rather than realistic flight simulation. The precise controls allow for swift and accurate aiming and provides a wide range of movement options. With just the click of the sticks, you can do fun maneuvers in the air. You can enjoy flying through beautifully designed expansive areas while engaging in fast-paced aerial combat. With a crisp high-definition look, that makes the color stunning. The ocean water blues and the green hills and the yellow desert canyons and the futuristic cities all look amazing. The art design invokes a nostalgic pulp serial feeling, giving it a globe-trotting vibe that I've always loved. There's serious variety in the places you go and the things you do. Most activities take place within your plane, but there's various missions such as races, dogfights, and sentry gunner work that keeps things varied from beginning to end. There's a good amount to do wherever you go, but it never overstays its welcome and is quite a breezy but fun 8 to 10 hour game. If you're a fan of Indiana Jones, this game captures the adventurous feeling. Instead of exploring temples on foot, you're just raiding ancient ruins in your plane. The game's charming 1930s theme sets it apart and gives it a unique identity that made it stand out on 6th generation consoles and still holds up on the Series X. You play as Nathan Zachary, a suave air pirate navigating an alternate version of the United States where planes and zeppelins dominate the country. He's a typical hero with a classic Hollywood vibe, and for fans of adventure films of that era like me, this game does a great job of capturing that feeling. The music in this game is top tier adventure music with a sweeping feeling and almost has a cartoonish feel. When you're flying around, it creates a high-flying adventure mood that makes the game soar. 
The game's world building is strong, and everything comes together very nicely. This is another game on this list that I just absolutely adore. It excels in every aspect of gameplay, and I encourage that you give it a try. Even if you're not a fan of flight games, this game is fast and action-packed enough to be highly entertaining for anyone. It's also only $10, which once again, is a great deal, especially to play at such a high definition on the series consoles. Check this one out if you've never played it, and especially if you have Game Pass. Ignition. Oh, the humanity. My coordinates and only two tanks left. The final game on today's list is The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, which is the Xbox port of the PC game. This version was released in North America and Europe in 2002. It was both published and developed by Bethesda. It is available on Game Pass and can be purchased for $15. Choosing Morrowind on the Xbox may seem unusual since the PC version is available with a wide range of mods and has an overall more straightforward control scheme. However, there's something about Morrowind's original, unaltered experience on the console that I love. It captures the magic and wonder of Vanderfell and has a great sense of adventure. It's a great RPG with excellent lore, extensive history, and dialogue that allows for deep immersion. If you're a fan of sprawling RPGs, I find it easy to look past some of the dated design elements and still have loads of fun in Morrowind. The version of Morrowind available on Game Pass includes both expansions. However, unlike the PC version, even the Game of the Year edition on Xbox does not have an easy quest log or tracker. You only have a journal for notes, but to keep proper quest notes, you either need to keep them in your memory or take copious notes in a notebook. This is something that I honestly really enjoy. Whether it's on a computer, phone, or like me, a physical notebook, tracking your adventure is such a nice tactile feeling and it makes it feel like you're delving into the role. Morrowind excels at this. The character customization stats and the number of spells and status effects are staggering. There is so much customization in Morrowind, and it's so much fun to just make a character and mess around. Even with that said, the lore and plot are deeply complex and well thought out. I think this is due to minimal voice acting, which allows for a lot of text to be read. Instead of relying on voice actors, large passages of text can just be written and read, providing a lot of information. I've always found the writing in Morrowind engaging, and I believe the story is essential for any fan of the Elder Scrolls series. I find that it takes some time to get used to this game, mainly if you're used to modern RPGs. The combat system is unique in that your attacks, even if they look like they hit, might not depending on your accuracy stats and other factors. I love this though because it allows you to really specialize your character rather than being a jack of all trades. It's interesting that despite its old school feel, the RPG experience still feels fresh today because of elements like this. Many modern RPGs have streamlined their experiences, but Morrowind doesn't follow this trend, which hardcore RPG fans will appreciate. Approach this game with an open mind and you'll discover great adventure. The graphics on the series consoles enhance the experience, and although the game may not be the most realistic visually, the art style is on point and the world feels well developed with huge cities to explore. It's a great RPG and definitely worth trying on the Xbox. If you have Game Pass, give it a download. Also considering the amount of content you get with this game, 15 bucks is a very good price. And that wraps it up for today, and that's just five of the many great games that are backwards compatible on the series consoles, and there are so many more that need to be included on the next iteration of this list. So be sure to comment below on what should be up next, 
and maybe some of your experiences with the games I talked about today, I would love to hear from you. Also, be sure to like as it really helps out my channel, subscribe to keep up with the retro Xbox content, and I want to thank all my campers and camp counselors. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.